right when you were ta talking about her million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is some good stuff. We I'm all texting her. The sound is done. <laughs> um, also, um, also, I'm just now noticing that we are now live streaming now. Okay. Um, and so I just want to say that, um, hello, Facebook. This is Healthcare for All Los Angeles chapter. Um, we are on with Elizabeth Castillo. Um, she is an RN and she is running for uh, State Senate uh, 33rd District. Um, and we were right in the middle of her pitch. So um, <laughs> continue on, Elizabeth. Okay, so I'll go back a little bit. Um, she did receive, um, I'm speaking about Senator Lena Gonzalez. Um, she's a state senator, the incumbent um, for the 33rd district. And uh, she was given money in the amount of $1 million to help advance her campaign. Uh, the millions that was given, given to her came from um, the Coalition to Restore California's Middle Class, uh, which actually is a misnomer. As you may know, the oil companies are not here to help the environment. Uh, Senator Gonzalez was given an independent expenditure coalition, um, which is funded by Chevron, Valero, and Tesoro. So, yeah, so that was a group that was formed, and um, so they gave her a million to support her campaign. Uh, the inter interesting thing is that none of the other challengers um, that were running with her received any type of support from them. It was only her. Um, the problem with, with that is that she claims to be an environmentalist, and it what it does is it creates the appearance uh, with accepting that money is that she is now indebted to the big oil companies. Also, what I wanted to, um, to say is that Consumer Watchdog Group has also, they've been following her and Ricardo Villada and have named them in an investigation of money, money laundering and bribery. Um, so I don't know if, it, if that'll go anywhere at any point, but um, hopefully at Later on, you know, maybe they'll continue that investigation. Um, I I know that they brought it to the attention of um, Attorney General Becerra, but obviously, you know, he hasn't done anything about that. Um, so what I want to say is, is the salient issues we are confronting today are lack of health care for our mi minority communities, specifically the Latino communities in the 33rd Senate District which have, some, have been some of the hardest hit by the coronavirus. Latinos are the most vulnerable because they are the least likely to have health insurance, especially undocumented immigrants. We lost you, Elizabeth, come back, sound wise. Can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Sorry about that, we must be having issues. Estás poniendo algo arriba del micrófono o algo así porque no se oye. Okay, how about now? Better, yes, thank you. Is that better? Okay, yes. sorry, maybe I was covering something. That's so weird. Okay, so Latinos are the most vulnerable because they are the least likely to have health insurance, especially undocumented immigrants. Many live in poverty and cannot afford their medications, co-pays, deductibles, or even uh, a visit to the emergency room. The inability to attain health care leads to chronic Ill illnesses such as diabetes, respiratory diseases, and heart disease. And this is one of the reasons why many communities of color, color particularly Latinos, have been most affected by the pandemic. Another reason the Latino population has been most affected is many of them live in multi-generational households. And maybe one or two family members still have to work and they go out and then they become infected and then they bring it back home to their families. So uh, I'm sure you know many of you have seen like Ellie and Peril, how they were um, not protecting their workers, um, just kind of skirting the guidelines. And um, at least 300 of their workers became um, infected with a coronavirus and four of them died. And really, to me, that's criminal. I, I don't understand why they're not um, charging them with something. Um, I just, I, I can't believe that they're letting them get away with this. Um, so, you know, that, that has really impacted our, our Latino communities and other um, communities of color. Um, also, um, for the reason I mentioned above, it's more important for us to have healthcare, a healthcare system, a single payer system now. Uh, many people have lost their, healthcare coverage because they have lost their jobs. 
And I think more and more people are finding out that we do need a single payer health care system right now, right? It's so important that we have that. Um, this pandemic has, and it really has brought this forth to everybody, you know, um, has really put a sh uh, light on what the disparities of health care are in our country. Um, the pandemic has also created another issue that I want to talk about is, is created the rent and mortgage forgiveness crisis. People cannot afford their, uh, their rent or mortgages uh, because they're not working. And um, so right now they're having to choose, you know, um, what they're going to pay for. Are they going to pay for food or their rent or um, their medications? And so it's, uh, it's really, really imperative that um, uh, our, our leaders help them and bail them out. Um, another, uh, they're waiting. So what I wanted to mention was that we were waiting for a relief package to come through. Um, I, I understand that the Senate has um, taken it upon themselves to recess on August 7th and the House of Representatives is set to recess on July 31st and they still haven't come up with anything um, substantial to um, help help the people uh, with paying their rent, um, unemployment. So we know that there's gonna be a, a big problem um, coming with, with um, evictions. And, and I see that you know being a, a big crisis and many people being evicted from their homes or from their apartments. And we've already seen it happening in, LA, in Southeast LA uh, where tenants uh, are being evicted by their landlords and harassed, intimidated. And then um, the police, uh, like LAPD sheriffs, um, helping helping the uh, the landlords do this. So um, this is going to be a big issue, and um, I wanted to bring that to mind that we really, really have to um, push our leaders to do the right thing and uh, and help everybody in this in, in our state of California. Um, so, anyways, I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to let me uh, talk about my campaign. And uh, specifically, yeah, I mean, I know, I understand that um, you're kind of short on, uh, low on money, but anything I would really appreciate, anything you can give me for my campaign uh, would be great, greatly appreciated. Thank you.